Hi, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'd like to give you a pantry tour and I'm gonna show you what we, as a family trying to follow the wise traditions or Weston A. Price diet, have in our pantry. I have another video that I recently did where I show what's in our refrigerator and freezers. So I'll have that link below in case you wanna check it out. But let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to actually start right over here just really quickly on my countertop. There's our eggs. We keep the eggs that come from our chickens in our backyard on this rack because eggs that have not been refrigerated yet are good for a little while at room temperature. So we like to leave them there and then we have all of our fermented things going and our, we have some bacon grease, usually there's a thing of butter there too. And then we've got salt and pepper for cooking. And that's kefir and some kefir cultured cream going right there. And then my sourdough starter needs to be fed. I was just filming another video showing how to make sourdough crepes, so it's out from that. And some rolls and some extra sourdough starter that I have sitting there to use for something else. So I wanted to include that sort of in this pantry tour since it's stuff that we use a lot that if we had the room <laughs> would be put away in a pantry. So now let's head on over to the actual pantry. I guess we'll go ahead and start right here on the top, going left to right, top to bottom. So here we have a few different things. Um, some of these things are just kind of overflow from what's in the refrigerator. There's some more sesame oil, there's some fish sauce, peanut butter, mustard, and then back there also is a jar of olive oil and then a thing of honey. And then in this bin over here, we have a thing of chocolate chips. Now, chocolate chips are not really something that's promoted on the Wise Traditions Weston A. Price diet, and that goes for chocolate, cocoa, all that kind of thing. To my knowledge, they don't really encourage it. Um, and that's one of the things that I kind of waffle around a little bit. Once in a while, I will use something with chocolate chips or make something with it. So we have those. I have a bottle of white wine back there. This is dry white wine. It's an organic dry white wine that I actually got at Costco. Most of the time we've been making meat stock lately so I don't do bone broth really often. But when I do bone broth, I'll add a splash of white wine. And then we have these little freeze dried peas and these dried carrot sticks. They're just nothing but peas or carrots. And I have them because once in a while when we're on the go, the baby needs something to snack on just really quickly. And so I have those just to bring. Once in a while my other kids will have them too. And then I have some citric acid. That's for uh, making cheese. And then some crystallized ginger, which actually is really old and I should probably get rid of that. I pretty much never use it and I'm not sure why I still have it, but. And then I have some carob chips. Carob is like a chocolate alternative and once in a while I'll use those for something. I also have some parsley flakes. I like using those inside meatballs and meatloaf. And I have some of my black peppercorns. This is kind of an overflow container. And then this jar here is what I use them out of. That overflow container should really be downstairs, but it's here for right now. And then over here I have my salts, my different kinds of mineral salts. My favorite one at the moment is this Baja Gold Sea Salt. It has so many great minerals. It's really high in magnesium, which is really helpful. And then my other favorite one is Celtic sea salt. So that one is another great one that has a lot of really good minerals. These two are probably my top favorite salts of all. Back here is some pink Himalayan salt, which I don't usually use. It's not the best option when it comes to a mineral salt, but it's okay. It's like, you know, bare minimum. And then, let's see, I think we said we'd go left to right. Over here I have some bigger spice containers. I have some powdered uh, garlic powder and onion powder, which I like to more often use actual cut up onions and garlic when I'm cooking, but once in a while I'll have something 
that calls for one of those, so I do keep those on hand. And then I have some cardamom pods, because I want to make some more pickled beets. And then some mustard seed, just kind of overflow containers there. And then here's all my little spice containers. I have a bunch of different things in here. There's some dill, um, some turmeric, cayenne, paprika, just all kinds of spices for cooking. These ones up here are, I think, more turmeric and some red pepper flakes, chili flakes. And then over here, I have more like baking type spices. So I have my cinnamon, nutmeg, powdered ginger, those kind of things. I have my vanilla extract that I get from Azure Standard. There's also a jar for arrowroot powder, which I very rarely use actually. And then some baking soda, baking powder. Just, you know, baking staples to have on hand. These are actually flavor extracts that I almost never use. Um, I think we got them to try to make some gummies once upon a time. Um, but usually I just use fruit and or honey for doing gummies. And then over here I have this thing of tea. It's a blend of raspberry and nettle tea. Probably not the best way to have it in a clear container like that. Something darker colored would be better, but this is what I have. There's a box of hibiscus tea, and then there's a bag of cocoa powder. Again, you know, one of those things where I just, you know, I use it sometimes, right? And then down on this next shelf, we have some different seeds. There's some chia seeds. Back there are some sesame seeds. Um, once in a while, I'll use those for something, not very often. And then there's coconut chips. These are just dried coconut that we used as like a little snack item on a road trip. And I have some commercial almond flour. I don't make almond flour baked goods that often. I try to use, you know, things that can use just like eggs or pumpkin or something like that. But once in a while we will. And when I do, I do like to grind it myself, soak and ferment and sometimes sprout the almonds first and then grind them. It's just better that way. But I did have this once for when I was in a hurry and I needed to make something for a class actually. So that's why I have that. And then over here we have some bigger spice things. Okay, these are bay leaves that I also get from Azure. A big thing of those because I like using those all the time when I'm making beef broth or beef stew and things like that. And then there's a thing of raisins back there, organic raisins. Over here we have popcorn. That's again something that I like to have on hand if I want a healthy, healthier treat of some type, but I really don't eat it that often. I mean, you know, the thing is, when you're eating all this good meat and fat and everything, you're just not hungry for snacks and treats and stuff so often. So I do have this stuff on hand, but um, like the cocoa and chocolate chips, I really don't use it very often. And then I also have these sun-dried cherry tomatoes that I grew and dried a while ago. And then I have some organic pasta, again, something I almost never use. I guess, you know, this pantry is more like, you know, some of the things like the salts and the peppercorns and some of the spices, the produce part, which we'll get to in a second, I do use on a regular basis. But a lot of this stuff, it just kind of sits there for once in a while. So... Yeah, just because it's here it does not definitely mean that we eat it on a regular basis at all. Um, mostly what we're eating is meat and vegetables. So, and then down here we have our produce basket. We like to make lemon water with these lemons. There's a little bit of ginger root there and there's a little watermelon left from stuff we grew in our garden. Down here are some oats that I will sometimes soak to make soaked oatmeal. But again, we are sticking mostly to just, you know, eggs, meat, that kind of thing when we eat. But sometimes we'll use it. And then, what's back here? Back there are some dried peas that you can soak overnight and then use in cooking. I tried them in a beef stew because I thought that would be easier than keeping frozen peas on hand all the time. And I have to say I wasn't really happy with the flavor and texture. So I think we're just going to keep them on hand for if we need, you know, dried food for an emergency or something because I did not really love them. And then here we have a big jug of molasses back there. It's blackstrap molasses, which I'll use once in a while. And then some raw organic apple cider vinegar again from Azure. Lots of this stuff is from Azure. It's like I said, one of my favorite places to get organic groceries and I'll have a link 
down below if you'd like to check them out. And then moving on down below, we have some bottles here of fizzy, we call it fizzy, fizzy water, sparkling water, sparkling mineral water. And we like to have that, you know, because we don't um, drink things like pop or soda or whatever, of course, because it's either way too full of sugar or has, you know, other flavorings and stuff that we don't want to use or drink. So we like to do this as like a fizzy treat sometimes, usually just on the weekends. And then in here we have some of our foods that we keep um, up here. A lot more is down below in the basement, but there's a butternut squash, some potatoes, it's kind of dark, um, and then a little bag of garlic. And then over here I have my canisters where I keep my flour. So I grind flour and use it up in a pretty quick um, time frame so that it doesn't have a lot of time to go rancid. Again, I wish I could find like a darker colored glass to store these in because that would be better. But this is what I have, so this is what I use. But I have some spelt, some hard red wheat, some rye flour, and some um, soft white wheat. And then I have some evaporated cane crystals uh, sugar again almost and never use those but I do use the flowers on a regular basis for feeding my sourdough starter and then we'll do pancakes or rolls or bread once in a while something like that and then um, these are just some other flowers that I have here I have some bread flour some all-purpose flour sometimes I have a recipe that calls for something like that in addition to the sourdough whole grains so I have those on hand to use I think there's also some I think there's also some unbleached white flour, all organic, all from Azure, and none of these have the um, synthetic uh, vitamins added to them, which is really important for us. And then over here, these technically go down in the basement, but they're right here. It's just bags of the whole grains that I use to grind into flour. And yeah, normally they should be put away down there, but I just kind of left them there because I was busy with other stuff. And then, so that's what we have up here. Sorry about the dirty floor, dirty door jams and all that kind of stuff. It always needs to be wiped down on a regular basis. So that's what we have upstairs. And then downstairs, like I said, there's just kind of overflow for this. We have some more squash and produce, some jars, larger jars of fermented foods down there, some more bags of whole grains. And um, that's pretty much it. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing that. I hope it was kind of interesting and gave you some ideas. I have some in-store shopping videos coming up very soon where I show when I go to um, the stores that I go to regularly what I buy. So I'll be sharing those soon so you can look forward to seeing them. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed seeing that. I have lots of recipe videos on my channel, so if you want to see more about cooking along the lines of a nourishing traditions or wise traditions Weston A. Price diet, be sure and check some of those out. I'll have some of them linked below. I'll also have that refrigerator tour linked below. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what are some of the most important pantry staple items that you like to keep on hand at all times. Are you in the video? Like I said, I'll have links below to Azure Standard, which is one of my favorite places to buy bulk organic groceries and lots of different things. Also check out that description box for free eBooks and other goodies. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it interesting or helpful. Here on my channel, I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient dense food, natural remedies and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.